Good morning. Can y'all hear me? Nope. nope. Microphone doesn't work. Oh, okay. Microphone. Okay. Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Stephanie Burgess and I'm a family nurse practitioner and associate dean for practice and health policy at USC College of Nursing. We are here today to address our state's poor health rankings and offer solutions to improve. These include reducing health care costs by keeping folks out of the emergency room, improving chronic disease outcomes, increasing access to care, and reducing barriers to care for patients. From an educator's point of view, Senate Bill 345 and House Bill 3772 will facilitate more uh, South Carolina nurse practitioners and certified nurse midwives to practice and serve underserved and rural populations without these current restrictions that are impeding care to our patients. Currently, over 50% of the nurse practitioners and nurse midwives in this state are serving rural or underserved populations. But we can do more and we can do a broader reach. South Carolina, if you didn't know this, currently ranks F, not F plus, F in healthcare according to the United Health Foundation. In fact, in our state last year, we went from 42 to 44 in our rankings. So we're getting worse, not better. 42 out of 46 counties in South Carolina are considered rural and underserved. Eight counties have no OBGYN physician providers. 19 counties have 10 or fewer family practice physicians. Seven have less than five, and we now have one county with no family practice physician. We've got to do better. We've got to make changes. Nurse practitioners and certified nurse midwives can help fill these gaps. These nurse practitioners and nurse midwives have on the average of about 10,000 hours of clinical practice by the time they complete their doctoral or master's degree. They are ready to stand and help the state contribute to the solution and improve our health care. We want to thank Governor McMaster for recognizing the status quo is not working. And we want to thank him for his vision of wanting to improve health care for South Carolinians. We want to thank Senator Tom Davis and Representative Clary for their courageous sponsorship of the legislation in the House and in the Senate that will remove barriers to care for our patients. And we want to thank our supporting business partners to include Michelin, AARP, the Carolina Center for Hospice and End of Life Care, Optum Healthcare, the South Carolina Hospital Association, CVS, New Morning Foundation, Kershaw Community Care, Eau Claire Cooperative, the Department of Mental Health. We also want to thank our wonderful physicians who are um, supporting us, and we have a stack of letters that we will be presenting at the um, hearing at 1030. And we want to thank all our professional colleagues, including physical therapists who are here. I know they're around here somewhere. And then we want to thank our APRN colleagues who showed up. But most of all, we want to thank our patients. It is because of you all that we stand here committed to help you, and we're going to do the right thing by you. So at this time, I would like to introduce Senator Davis, and then Representative Clary, and then Governor McMaster. And so, gentlemen, I turn the podium over to you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burgess. The bill that's going to get a subcommittee hearing at 1030 in just a few minutes, which would provide the relief that Dr. Burris talked about, it does two things, really. It treats nurse practitioners fairly, and it does something that is right for the people of South Carolina. Now, what do I mean by treating nurse practitioners fairly? Well, first of all, let's realize that this bill deals with those individuals who have at least a master's degree in nursing, an advanced practice level, which means they are educated and clinically trained to assess, diagnose, and educate patients regarding health care. We're talking about letting individuals perform actions that are commensurate with their level of training. We're talking about allowing them to do the very thing that they're trained to do. And whenever the law, if the law exists and the law constrains and restricts somebody,
from doing something that they are qualified and trained to do, there's something wrong with the law. And, and what we have is a decades-old law that is predicated upon a time when nurses didn't get the degree of training that they get today. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, address a situation where you've got professionals who have master's degrees. I mean, the current law that requires physician supervision and a 45-mile radius like you have a chain on you doesn't make any sense in today's day and age. So from strictly a liberty and a fairness to nurse practitioner's standpoint, what we want to do is free you to provide the full extent of what your medical training provide, allows you to do. The second thing is what's right for the people of South Carolina. As, as Dr. Burgess just said, we get an F in terms of health care outcomes. And too often when we talk about health care outcomes, we focus in on insurance and trying to get somebody insured. But somebody being insured doesn't help them one bit if there isn't somebody to provide that service or if there's an expensive copay. What we're talking about doing effectively here is doubling the number of health care providers. What you've got right now are approximately 3,000 uh, physicians, 3,600 physicians in South Carolina, and 3,500 advanced nurse practitioners. You're talking about doubling the number of health care providers in South Carolina overnight. What we're also saying is to advanced nurse practitioners that if you want this degree of autonomy, if you want to be able to provide this level of care without supervision, you have to go into rural, underserved areas. So we talk all day long about improving health care access to rural communities. This is a concrete thing we can actually do about it. It goes beyond rhetoric. It goes beyond political posturing. It gets people into rural communities that are now underserved. So if we want to improve health care outcomes for South Carolinians, let's double the number of health care providers that can do it. If we want to target rural areas, let's support this bill which requires them to serve those underserved areas. And by all means, let's do something that's right and just. A law that restricts somebody from providing something that they are trained to provide is an unjust law and must be changed, and that's what this bill is all about. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am uh, I'm honored to be able to be uh, the primary sponsor of H3772 in the House. But let me tell you this. I'm really hoping that Senator Davis moves his bill along to the House side because this is needed legislation in South Carolina. Dr. Burgess, we've been uh, walking this road for, for several years now, and Senator Davis, and to have Governor McMaster, who's been my friend for a long time, uh, to, to, to come on board with this uh, is, is huge. You know, where I come from, Clemson, South Carolina, and Clemson University, and I see a lot of tiger paws on white jackets around here today, we are proud of the advanced practice registered nurses that we produce as well as all the other great institutions in our state. And this is simply delivering health care to people who need it. That's all we're talking about. And in order to do that, we need more trained professionals because too many people go without health care in South Carolina because they can't see a provider. So. The, the only thing that I would say, in addition to what, what Senator has said, is that we need to just simply think about what we're told through Proverbs 31, 8, and 9, that we are to speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute, to speak up and judge fairly, and to defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And that's what we're trying to do here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Burgess, Senator Davis, Mr. Clary, I am delighted to be here with, with you and all you've done and all these happy faces. This, is, this really is a happy moment. I think this is going to be a, a turning point in the history of our state because just about every question that is asked about the future of our state and what we're going to do, how we're going to make things better, this is a part of the answer. Economic development. People want to come, they want to work. Well, they need to be healthy and they need to be in the rural areas. 
Well, education. The children need to be healthy. They need to go to school. They need to be well. The parents need to be healthy. They need to be able to work. They need to be able to, this is a part of the answer to every question there is facing our state. So this is a this is as, as big a moment as as we've had. It's enormously important. South Carolina, I can tell you from the people that I am in a position to meet with and see and discuss the future of our state and our people. And everybody, by the way, they say people in South Carolina are different from any place else in the whole country. And they, that's why they're coming here. But the, the companies, the businesses, the leaders that want to expand, they have great faith in the people of South Carolina. And if we can just keep them healthy by allowing them to have health care available throughout the state, we will have changed everything. We're on the way up. For those of you who are equestrians, there's an old saying is, you don't pull on the reins when your horse is jumping. Well, we're going up. We're jumping. We're going over, going to the top. And we have to loosen those reins and let these horses run. And these nurse practitioners, our doctors and nurse practitioners are good people. They're in a very important area in the life of our state right now. And I'm confident that we will be able to develop a plan and a system that will work for everybody and keep the people of our state healthy, happy, and prosperous. So I, my hat is off to all of you. I promise you we'll do all we can to see that this becomes the law. And I predict you can write it down. It's going to happen. And thank you. Thank you.